Joshua chapter 8, verse 32. It says, And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel, and all Israel, and their elders, and officers, and their judges, stood on this side the ark, and on that side before the priests the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well the stranger, as he that was born among them, half of them over against Mount Gerizim, and half of them over against Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel, with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them. So the Lord has given Ai into the hands of Joshua and Israel. And Joshua is now going to read the words of the law to them. Half of Israel is standing at the feet of Mount Gerizim, and half at the feet of Mount Ebal. And the sound of Joshua's voice between the two mounts is most likely echoing very well for everyone to hear the law clearly. The words of the Bible are written very clear for us to be aware of what God wants us to do as well. And it is clear enough for you to at least realize that you can't keep the law perfectly. So you have to get help from somebody who can keep the law perfectly, who did keep the law perfectly. God lays down the law, but he also offers you freedom. The same one who laid down the law laid down his life to give you freedom from it. The lawgiver is also the life giver. Let's look at a few things about the written word where you see the law and the living word, the one who kept the law for you. Number one, the law was carved in stone, but the living stone conquered the law. It says, and he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. So he writes, a, he writes there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses. So the law was carved in stone, but the living stone conquered the law. Joshua wrote a copy of the law of Moses on plaster in the stones. Now, you can't fully keep what's written. Joshua wrote this in the presence of the children of Israel in verse 32, where everyone could see it. All Israel was there. It says in verse 33, And all Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites. They were all there. The law is written in stone. You can't change it. And even the ones who were blameless, like the Bible talks about people who are blameless, like in Philippians 3, 6. Look what it says about Paul over in Philippians 3 and verse 6. It says, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. Paul was blameless according to the law. It talks about Zechariah and Elizabeth, Luke 1, 6. It says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Even the ones who were blameless concerning the law, they broke it sometime in their life. Nobody kept it perfectly except the Lord Jesus Christ. It, it is something that no one has ever been able to bear. As it says in Acts 15, 10, nobody's been, ever been able to bear it. This law is set in stone. You can't add to it. Neither should you take away from it. So you have to have someone keep it for you. And Joshua wrote a copy of the law. Think about that too. Just because we don't have the original in front of us doesn't mean the Word of God has vanished. The copy in your lap is inspired and preserved. He wrote a copy. Was it any less the Word of God? It was still the Word of God. This means that it's never going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. He's preserving it. 
And you're responsible for what you do with all the words. Look, he wrote all the words over there in Joshua 8. Going back to Joshua 8. It says, And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. And they're all there. And uh, verse 34 says, And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. You're responsible for what you do with all the words. You're going to have to make a decision to get out from under the condemnation of the law and into the liberty of Jesus Christ because you can't fully keep what is written. But the writer can keep it and kept it and keeps you. Jesus Christ is the writer and he is the stone. As it calls him many times, Ephesians 2.20, 1 Peter 2, 4 through 8, Matthew 16, 18, Luke 6, 48. He's the stone. Now Joshua wrote on the stones a copy. But Jesus Christ is the real stone. Jesus Christ did everything a man would have to do and abstained from everything that a man would have to abstain from in order to keep the law perfectly. The one who made the laws came down and kept the law to perfection. He was given every opportunity to break it, but he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 I had to get the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, as Romans 4 talks about. And the Lord Jesus was found righteous in every aspect. You, you examine the Lord Jesus Christ's life from birth to the cross, perfect in every aspect, according to the law, blameless, never broke the law one time. And then when I got saved, he took away my unrighteousness and gave me all of his righteousness. This got me out of the prison and it keeps me from going back in. The writer kept it and he keeps you. The moment I got in the Lord Jesus Christ, I was made free from the law of sin and death, Romans 8, 2. I have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Colossians 2, Colossians 2, 11. The Lord cut off the old ball and chain, circumcising my soul from my flesh. Now I'm free and no longer tied down to something that only a perfect person can please. And there's only been one perfect person. You see, the law is like a strict spouse that only a perfect man could appease. The only one who could possibly fulfill it is Jesus Christ. Even after I'm saved, I can't be made perfect by the flesh. I can't get righteousness by the law because I still can't keep it to perfection in this vile body. The circumcision and blood of Jesus Christ, the spiritual circumcision that is, it keeps me free from the contamination of the flesh. I can serve without fear of death by sin and fear of bondage. The law was carved in stone, but the living stone conquered the law. And when I got saved, he gave me his righteousness. Now it's as if I kept what was written in stone, even though I didn't, even though I couldn't. Number two, from the lawgiver, which is Moses, came the commandments. From the like prophet came grace and truth. That's what it says over there in the book of John. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1, 17. The law is your schoolmaster. You know, Moses pictures the law. He showed them what to do, how to do it, how to live, but he didn't get them into the land. Joshua pictures Jesus Christ, he got them in the land. Even though Joshua is the one who gets them in the land, he's still following what Moses said in the law. I mean, look at look look there in Joshua 8, 33. He's, he's still following what Moses said. 
It says in Joshua 8, 33 at the end of the verse, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded before that they should bless the people of Israel. Even though Jesus Christ did for us what the law couldn't do, he still wants to establish the law. Romans 3, 31. In Romans 3 and verse 31, it says, Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. The law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good, but it's the schoolmaster that brings us to Jesus Christ. You see, a good teacher shows you how to graduate, but we need somebody to pass the test for us, and that's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ is more than just a good teacher. He passed the test for you. It's funny how those who deny the deed of Jesus Christ will, will say that. They'll say he's a good prophet. He's a good teacher. The Bible says he's the prophet like unto Moses. And he's the best teacher. And he took 33 years worth of tests. And he's willing to apply it to your permanent record. He aced every test. And he's willing to put all that in your file. You know, homework, exams, pop quizzes, TCAP, SATs, and all that will have you in bondage for years. Jesus Christ is the teacher who aced every test and then applies the grades to you. The law was given by Moses. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Through grace, he gives you a passing grade. Through mercy, he doesn't give you what you do deserve, which is an F minus. From the lawgiver came the commandments. From the like prophet came grace and truth. The law was carved in stone, but the living stone, the Lord Jesus Christ, conquered the law. The written word shows us our sinfulness. The living word was made flesh and became our sinfulness. The written word shows every man a sinner. The law doesn't just have blessings, but also cursings. As you see in verse Joshua 8, 34, it says this, And afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. You know, it's not just blessings, it's also cursings. And when you open the pages of the Bible, it shows you a lost man is under the curse. And the lost man's lack of hearing the word keeps him from realizing his need for righteousness. The saved man's famine of the word keeps him from growing. This shows the importance of putting out all the words of the book, as Joshua does in verse 34. It will eventually cross every man, every woman, and little one. It's like in verse 35, it says, There was not of the word, there was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua read not before all the congregation of Israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversing among them. It was important for every single age, man, boy, girl, woman to hear it. And there's not one of them that the, the law wouldn't have crossed in some way. It hits the nail on the head for every person in the crowd. As Joshua reads those words, it would have been, it would have even crossed the leaders of Israel. And I mean, they were there. It says in verse 33, and all Israel, their elders and officers and their judges, all the big timers were there. It would have crossed all the big timers too. They would have to offer, offer up sacrifice for their own sins. The priests would have. Hebrews 7, 27, they, they offered up sacrifice first for their own sins. The law even crossed Joshua himself, the one that's making the copy there, the one that's reading it to everybody. The best of the best men are pale in comparison to the perfect man, the man Christ Jesus. Joshua is a type, but the types never match perfectly, especially when the antitype is a perfect man, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, one meteor between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, and that's a perfect man. If Joshua can't keep every bit of the law, do you think you can keep every bit of the law? You need a substitute. And the schoolmaster showed you your sins 
Then the substitute teacher came in and became the propitiation for your sins to appease the wrath of God on your behalf. The law was your schoolmaster, but then showed up the substitute teacher that kept everything that was written on that plaster. The living word sacrificed himself for sinners. The written word shows every man a sinner. The living word sacrificed himself for sinners. The schoolmaster could be laying down the law. Then the substitute teacher would come in and give him a rest. Maybe give me the answers. Jesus Christ stepped in after the schoolmaster and gave me the answer. And now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Romans 3.21. Look at that verse. Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. See, back there in the Old Testament, they to, to get temporary to be temporary righteous in the sight of God, you had to keep the law as best you could, offer the prescribed sacrifice when you broke it, because they all broke it. Now, it says, now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the substitute stepping in. While the written word is like a mirror that shows you your sinfulness, the living word became flesh and became your sinfulness on the cross. And when you behold your natural face in a glass, it shows your vile body. And if you had a spiritual mirror, it would show you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This first reminds you of bondage. The second should remind you of liberty. The living word came down in the likeness of sinful flesh. He limited himself with this flesh by feeling tired, feeling hungry, sleepy, thirsty, feeling physical pain. He became poor so that you could be rich. And to find freedom from a law that you can't ever conquer, you must get in the one who conquered it. And only in him is liberty. Galatians 5.1, Galatians 2.4. Over in Galatians 5.1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Just because Joshua and Israel had made it past Jericho and Ai, doesn't mean they were going to get slack on the law. Instead of laying back and celebrating, they're getting even more acquainted with the words. Just because me and you have been saved and in the victory for some time, doesn't mean we should now make void the law or say, let us do evil that good may come, Romans 3, 8. We need to rest in our liberty knowing that nothing can take away our freedom in Jesus Christ. But at the same time, the love of Christ constraineth us, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. So we go through the scriptures with the Pauline epistles as our filter and try to keep every command that would apply to us. But, but if you're not in Jesus Christ, you're still under the law. And if you're under the law, then you're condemned already, John three thirty six. Because you could never live good enough to fulfill it. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be made free. The living word versus the written word. You can't fully keep what's written, but the writer kept it and he keeps you. The law is your schoolmaster, but Jesus Christ is more than a good teacher. He's the propitiation. He's the substitute. He stepped in, he aced the test, gives you the, gives you the passing grade, gives you his passing grade. The written word shows every man a sinner. The living word sacrificed himself for sinners. The law was carved in stone, but the living stone conquered the law. From the lawgiver, Moses came the commandments. From the like prophet came grace and truth. The written word shows us our sinfulness. The living word was made flesh and became our sinfulness.